Hello everyone. Um, I have recently been to um, a friend's house who I met on the Microwave Kiln Fusing Fanatics page um, with two other ladies who we also met on there. It's a great page and uh, you make some firm friends and loads of advice. Um, but anyway, so um, I don't know if anyone's heard of Tabitha. Um, many of you will have. So Tabitha's Glass Emporium, um, she makes the most amazing uh, Marini or Marine. I never know how to pronounce it, so I'll just go with whichever comes out of my mouth first. Um, so she makes all sorts of things um, creatures, flowers, birds, um, loads and loads of stuff, little hedgehogs and everything. Um, and uh, then we can buy them and make beautiful things out of them. So um, as I say, I went to uh, Leslie's house. Thank you, Leslie, for hosting with Paula and Carly and uh, we got to make this. Um, now we've all now gone from microwave kilns which we still use um, quite a lot but we've also now got bigger kilns so we were able to make a larger piece. Um, this is one of Tabitha's um, tutorials and um, it shows you um, how to make the pressed flowers. So these are Marini um, but they've been pressed while melting in the kiln um, under weight so um, they've actually pushed down and made bigger pieces which is absolutely brilliant and really fun to do and great for using up scrap as well so anyway we got to make this which i hope you agree is they are fabulous and um, i wanted to see if i can replicate it on a smaller scale in my largest microwave kiln so i'm going to go through the steps that is on tabitha's um youtube page so if you hunt out uh, extra large marini um sun catcher um you should be able to find it if not i'll put a link in the comments anyway um so we're gonna have a go at making something like this i don't know if it's gonna work but hey if you don't try you don't know so anyway i'm gonna pop that away over there safely because i don't want to drop it because some parts of it are quite fragile um, but I'll go through that as we go. So what you're going to need is um, I'm going to work on my kiln base. Um, so I've got a piece of thin fire paper on the bottom. Now I normally put down a piece of um, fibre paper as well and uh, that will go underneath with my thin fire on the top. Normally I do a circle piece of thin uh, fibre paper um, but I forgot so we just have a square luckily it's pretty much the same size as the pieces we're going to use and then we've got the protection of the thin fire anyway so we're okay so the first things that you're going to need in order to do this are some um tector so clear tector approximately one centimeter they're completely different look at that but approximately one centimeter strips now these that i'm doing in the larger kiln are I will do it in centimetres because that's how I work. Um, so about seven centimetres and you're going to need four of them. Um, super glue would be a really good idea but I've actually run out so I'm just going to use my blue glass tack gel um, which I pretty much use for everything. That's from by Bullseye and I get it from Warm Glass. So what we're going to do is our first step is we're going to lay these down in a, a, a square because um, what we're going to do is actually turn it on its side to make it or turn it round to make it more of a, a diamond shape so you've got your two on the bottom two on the top they are just three mil and uh, the whole project is going to be tack fused however because I want to keep some of that texture however it's going in the microwave kiln so who knows anything could happen um, so I'm turning it on its side and I will glue these together i have little hooks um, which i'm going to use just to put one in the top um, but we do have a couple of steps before we get to that side and before we actually get to decorate so there's my little hook so what we're going to be doing is this is your base and then you're going to be building up over the top with some frit stringers and marini it doesn't matter if you haven't got any pressed marini at this stage because you can just decorate it with anything that you've got whether you've made dots flowers whatever you've done you can decorate it um so what we're going to do is 
Now, Tabitha uses three mil um, fibre paper to put in the centre and that's to prop up all your lovely pieces that you're going to be putting on. So say I'm just going to randomly pick one. You've got it up here. You want the paper. Oh, dropped it. You want the paper to help prop that centre panel up. So I'm just going to work out. Um, I've not got any 3 mil at the moment. I thought I did. It turned out it was a table protector. But <laughs> I don't want to be putting that in the kiln. Um, it's lucky I haven't done it already. So I've got three 1 mil pieces. So I'm just going to use a, a Sharpie. Good old Sharpie. And I'm just going to roughly mark where I want my 3 mil piece that's going to go in here. So I'm going to just go there and there let's see if i can cut a square out i doubt it very much but we'll have a go so i'm just going to go slightly it's probably way too small now who knows <laughs> okay so i've got my that in there it should really have been tighter and gone to the end and the edges but um yeah not to worry. Um, now, another step that I do is um, I actually put a piece of thin fire over the top because I like, one, the smoothness of it. Two, I don't like, um, I don't like all the bits that get caught um, in the back, especially when you're using frit and stringer and things like that. So I'm just going to put a piece of thin fire. So we've got our four pieces, three mil or three one mil papers fiber paper and then I've got a bit of thin fire over the top and obviously this can all be cleaned off afterwards as long as it's not between the corners where they're sandwiched together um, but anyway you can get a brush in there it's not the end of the world um, so I'm going to go in now with my glass pack and very carefully she says this is where I say very carefully and then I knock it everywhere so that's those corners that corner i've not done this before in the microwave kiln so um let's learn together <laughs> and see what happens this is where i put it in and it all cracks and stuff but i really do preempt what might happen right i'm just going to use a pair of tweezers just to try and line that back up again tweezers a trusty friend right so now i've got to try and get my little hook <laughs> My little hook. Oops, see? Moved it already. <clears throat> Trouble is, I've got too many sleeves going on. It's freezing cold in my studio at the moment. Um, so I'm well layered up, but it means I feel like the Michelin man with all my all my sleeves and clothes and everything. Roll on spring. Right, so I'm just pushing that in there. And that will just hold that in place now you could leave that to dry for a bit especially with the glass tack because it takes a bit of time or use super glue um as say i've run out of super glue so hence why i'm not using it so that's where we are already so what we're going to do is we are going to create this part here um now there's different ways of doing it when i made my first one of these we put the frit on afterwards when i made this one i put some frit down then some stringers, then a bit more frit, and then more stringers. So you actually get the thickness of it, but you still got the stringers on the front. Um, and I think Tabitha did something like that as well. So, but watch her video um, as well, because it's fabulous. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put some glass tack gel around on here. And it's I'm putting it on my thin fire because it will help keep some bits in place and we're just doing this bottom corner it doesn't matter if it goes on here because as you can see on this one this one's got quite a bit of decoration anyway and it looks quite nice when it overlaps can you see that i don't know if i just took it too far but there we go so what i'm going to do is i'm using a coarse frit and i've got jade so I am just going to carefully layer up some jade on here just to give me a base because you're not putting anything behind this. 
so it's an open kind of picture um, which means any bits of frit that are kind of left will just bobble up on their own and they'll have nothing to stick to so the trick with doing this is making sure that your pieces are connected to other pieces which will then give you that framework um, to hold it all together or you just end up with lots and lots of little frit dots which isn't a bad thing because we all love a dot um, so I've not done this on this small scale so my quantities and proportions might be a little bit off um, but we shall see so I'm just going to put a couple up here I am going to put other frit on top of this as well so we've got some different colours so that's just a base a base layer so the next one I've got is pea pod and this is a medium and again I'm just going to go in all around here get some pea pod on and I've moved it again I'm going to keep doing that you see this is why super glue is good because it won't move as much um, but hey it'll be fine I'm also going to see if I can move it downwards a bit because of the little hook and well it's going to be a diamond shape anyway so pff, if it moves it moves <laughs> don't follow me don't, don't you know don't listen to what I do do something else <laughs> okay now we've not got any powders or anything going on this it's purely frit and your stringers and like your wafers and marine marine whichever i can't remember so that's in with our frit on that i'm also going to pop a little bit of spring green on because i love spring green green it's such a beautiful colour. Now you could mix up whether you just want transparent, whether you want some opal. It's entirely up to you. It's your design. You do whatever you want to do. Um, again, these little pieces here, which are not on anything, they are literally just going to melt on their own and be left on your papers when you lift your piece up. So if you can get pieces back into where you want them, then that's better. Um, I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit, I think, just on this bottom piece here because I quite like the idea of having a little bit of colour around there. Tabitha again on hers, she's used powders beforehand so she's actually coloured her frame already which looks really beautiful and I was going to do that but then um, I forgot. <laughs> so I've got some bits down here. Um, so you want to try and keep your frit away from the edges because when it melts you could end up with little spiky bits of frit stuck to the edge um, I'm actually going to push them if I can without nudging the whole thing again back inside because then they'll just melt on the inside instead okay and then excuse my sniffing and um, I'm so cold someone make me a coffee Please. Oh, I could message my mum. Bring my mum, make me a coffee. Um, that's if she's in. Right. So I'm just going to put this one is emerald. And again, I'm just going to put some bits further down as well, just to bring that colour. Because it's such a small piece, I think bringing the colour down onto the frame um, actually will make it look like it's bigger than it is. Um, it might not. It might not. But, you know. That's the idea anyway in my brain. My brain goes off on a tangent quite often, as we know if you've watched any of my other videos. So that's our first bit. And the next bit I'm going to do is these are Tabitha stringers. And they've got, um, I'm not quite sure what this green is. I could probably work it out. Um, but the other side is a Venturine green, which if you've used a Venturine before, you'll know it's got a little sparkle to it. So that's really nice. Um, now these pieces on here that I use these are quite fragile um, so because they're on their own there's there's nothing kind of here and here to make strengthen them so I'm going to opt for some slightly bigger thicker pieces um, although this is a smaller one I suppose you could put some little clear bits underneath just to give it that extra um, support um, but by the time you've put your bits on um it depends how you're layering it up always store your glass stack upside down it's so much easier now i put instead of trying to get it on the frit 
um, to hold this in place because you'll end up taking all, see, taking all the frit with you. Um, I put my glass tack on the actual piece. So I've put a piece, some on here to position it. And I like it when it comes over the frame. So I've done a few on this one where it's actually coming over the frame. I think it looks really nice. But it's your design. You do whatever you whatever you want to do. Um, so again, sometimes I have a pile of glass tack just on a bit of paper or something just so that I can dip things. Um, but I haven't. <laughs> I don't know what I do half the time. Let's make it up as I go along. Um, so I'm going to have a piece coming there, I think. And I want some of the adventuring showing because it is so lovely. Oh, see, things go off askew. Trusty tweezers. Things go off askew. And, um, yeah, so that, that'll do it. See, look, I've moved it again. You're going to be moving it about quite a bit unless you super glue it. So, um, welcome to my world. Um, right, I've got a lovely long piece here, which I think is going to go up here. And some glass stuck on the end of that one. I keep having to nudge my thin fire over. Um, we didn't use Simfire on our one that we did at Leslie's and I don't believe that Tabitha does either. I'm just a bit of a stickler for Simfire. I like it and I like how it leaves everything that I'm doing. Right, I'm not worried about that overlapping at the bottom because again, I think that makes it interesting. So I'm going to... Oh, got glass tack everywhere. Not to worry. Lucky it's not super glue in now. I'd be sat here going, Can someone take me to hospital. I've <laughs> glued my fingers to my knee or something. Anyway. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to put some, uh, just let it flow over it. I hope you can see this. Ooh, squeezy. So that I can then attach some more frit on the top. Just a little bit of different colour just so it kind of breaks up those those stems a little bit so they're not so in your face on the front so and I will go in with my favorite a bit of spring green spring green is always difficult to get this time of year so if you think you're going to be doing Easter stuff or whatever or spring things go out and get your Easter stuff get your spring green because uh it's a bit like when it's Christmas, you can't go to brown or red. It's really hard. So just uh, get what you need. Luckily, I've got a bit more this time. Right. These bits here will probably melt onto the back and I'll be like, oh, why did I do that? Because now they're all like little jaggedy bits, but it's going to hang up on a window and hopefully look nice. So what I'm going to do next, now I've got, lots of lovely tabitha things i've got some really beautiful leaves and then these tiny mini flowers which are fabulous now if anyone's seen my greenhouses and my little mini houses that i make i keep hold of i don't take these to workshops because these are mine um so they're really really tiny little ones little flowers and they're beautiful and then little tiny leaves um so what you can do is if you've got a couple of leaves so say you've got one that's quite big and you've got a pair of nippers you can take your nippers put it on the side and then you can hopefully if it works break it into two leaves so you get a bit more out of it um well, just generally get a bit more out of it is quite nice, I think, to be able to actually get more out of it. Um, so I'm just going to select a few little leaves. You don't have to cut them up. You can have them whatever they come when they come from Tabitha. But um, I just uh, I like getting more out of things because I use a lot of them. So um, I am hoping at some point, thankfully, with Tabitha's um, permission as well, to making some sort of packs like this where you'll have a few more stringers, you'll have a, a random selection of like 15 gram or 25 grams um, of just random Tabitha stuff and some um, frit so that you can actually do a couple of projects with like a seascape 
or floral um but i just thought it'd be a nice thing to to do so keep an eye out for that and uh if it is something you think you'd be interested in comment in the um in the comments because i i want to trial it and see how it goes but it means that you'll just get um this is uk only um but you will get a selection of random pieces i don't know what you're going to get um i will do a little scoop of some and then do some tutorials based on exactly what i get in my random scoop um but yeah if you're in think you'd be interested in that at some point um comment or message me um because it'd be really interesting to see if it's something people might like um obviously for people that have never bought from tabitha before um you are missing out so either buy from her directly um or as a stay get a random pack and then if there's something in there you love using you can order it more from from tabitha um and watch her tutorials and everything because she's absolutely fantastic but anyway so I'm going to use some bits from here, but also some of my little mini flowers. So my first thing first, first thing first, is with my little leaves, I want to make sure that anything I put on is connected either to the outside, to the frit, or to the stringers. You can put more stringers on, you can put thinner ones on, it's absolutely fine. It just depends how fragile you, you really want it. Um, oh, off he goes. So I just want to make sure that my leaves, get in there, that my leaves are underneath this, the stringers. I've got glass tack on my tweezers, so everything's sticking to it. Obviously, you've got nowhere to glue it to, so it's kind of like just looking at the position of your stuff, seeing where it might go. Um, I'll pop that under there. I'm going to pop. A little one ooh, I don't know down here I'm hoping this will melt onto it darker one again just down here randomly and a little one down here and what I'm gonna do is with the center one I'm gonna go in with some bigger leaves and uh, see I've moved it all again now but that's okay it's kind of there right so I've got some um, bigger leaves in here um, so this is from the random the random pack so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one here so it's actually hopefully on the edge of the glass and then with the stringer um, I will make sure that when you get a pack you do get a few leaves because obviously in this, this selection I've got I've been using bits from it um, and I don't have really any more leaves um, in that one so this here is a few little things that I've done, which is the pressing, which Tabitha um, has the tutorial on. And it's basically Marini that has been flattened. Now, I did do this in my Big Girl kiln, but I am going to have a go again at doing it in the microwave kiln when I find a fire brick or something heavy enough, but small enough to put inside um, the microwave kiln. To, as it melts, as the Marini melts, it pushes it and makes it thinner um and nice and flat um i just kiln washed my kiln shelf um and you can see i'm hoping you can see that's a really nice piece there so i'm actually going to use that piece um i've also got a yellow which i can use another piece of marini that i flattened inside to maybe make a a center for it um but i'll have a look and see what other ones i want to use now i don't normally i find it tricky using yellows and oranges and things so i'm stepping out of my comfort zone just for you <laughs> now i don't want too many because obviously this is this is quite small so i don't want to overload it with loads however i do like to work in threes fives i like an odd number um although i've only got four of these one two three four i'm gonna have to put another one on it's not gonna work for my brain um so i uh <laughs> i really hope you guys are like oh listen to her and not in a bad way i can't help it chatting away right there we go so i'm happy you can display these any way you like you know the first one i did of this had them all over the place because i had different types of stringers um or rather leslie did and she let us use them because she's awesome um so you know you can have them going all over the place i'm just doing this one just see if it works um and after all this i really i really hope it does 
Now I've got half an hour-ish before I have to leave to go and pick my son up. Now these are wet and the reason being is I only got them out of the kiln this morning um, but when they're wet and Tabitha will show you oh, I've got glass tackled on it now um, Tabitha will show you the way you can see your colours is by making it wet so I'm going to position these where I want them um, now sometimes that's going to be quite tricky because you've got quite a thick stringer and they're not maybe not going to sit properly so again a bit of glass tack and uh, and see where you're gonna put it so and again I like it on the on the actual base because I think that looks nice or not the base on the surround because I think that looks really nice squeaky squeak you can tell I'm using the glass tack because you can hear me squeaking so hopefully these aren't going to move around too much um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of the yellow at the top and another yellow here I'm not quite sure what this combination looks like you can all be like why have you done that combination oh, well, I don't know I just liked it which I say is weird for me because I don't really do yellows and oranges very much but actually it's good gotta do it sometimes right so I'm just going to go into my again little random pack and pick out a few pieces so I've got a little sunflower here again all Tabitha um, she's such a clever lady and her team and her are amazing um, oh just so clever I'm going to Croatia one day I've already told Tabitha I'm like I'm coming along and uh, I'm gonna come and f come and visit do a workshop stay over go for dinner sounds great right so I've just cut this up roughly um, some of the bits broke but it's, it doesn't matter because I'm still going to use them on here so I'm just putting some little flowers in here so with my little half piece that broke I could just shove that behind there and then I've got another little piece that broke so I'm just going to shove that shove it I'm not going to shove it I'm going to carefully along with my design that I planned <laughs> pop it in there um, and I've got another lovely yellow flower which actually I'm going to use hopefully it will come out um, hopefully it won't slip off but I'm going to see if what this looks like on here it might slip off I don't know we'll soon find out won't we so there we go a little centerpiece on that one I'm not putting centerpieces on these because they're actually really nice they've got like a pink and a blue and, and everything so I'm going to leave that and then this one's actually got um, the starburst coming out of it but what I will do yeah look at these tiny flowers they're so cute so um, what I could do is I could go in with um, some little flowers again down here um, and yes they are gorgeous <laughs> they're just like sweeties so yeah as I said to you before if you have not tried Tabitha's things then you you need to give them a go because they are so brilliant um, and if you want a pack of randoms let me know because I'm hoping to get those sorted out soon so there we go we just got a needle flower in the middle there um, and I'm going to put a couple of these down here oh I hope this works a couple there I'm just using the little yellow ones to kind of mirror what I've already done and a little bit there right okay so that's my piece done now I'm hoping all the leaves are going to stick normally you'd use quite like a lot bigger if you can um, especially when you, if you've squished some um, oh I've got a squished leaf Look at that, just found it. Oh, and another one. Oh, so excited. <laughs> so we got a little squished leaf there and a squished leaf here, which I'm just going to put there and overlap on this bit here so that when it's all melted, it should overlap on the sides. Look at that. So they're squished, Marini of tapifers and I've done it again I've moved it and they will they're brilliant for stuff like this one they're flat um, 
and two they're pretty much the size they're going to be so you can you can get an idea of the size they're going to be when they when they melt and say so i'm going to do try and do this on attack fuse in the microwave kiln it might work it might not so these are all touching this is touching here these leaves are touching i'll probably maybe have a bit of frit that might go off on its own on a tangent um but we'll see how that goes so the last little piece that i'm gonna do i'm gonna put a little bit of glass tack around here in the places you can see and i'm gonna put some random pieces of frit um, now I'm going to go in with, I think, maybe a little bit of burnt orange. Oh, I don't know. Pumpkin orange. Let's go for some pumpkin orange. And I've got a whole box behind here. You can hear me rummaging. Of little tiny pots. Um, because when I do workshops, it's a lot easier to take little tiny pots, the bigger pots or bags or, or whatever. So I'm just going to dot... A couple round here, here, and here. I will pick up the ones that are decided to go for a try and escape, making a run for it. And put a little bit down here where I've got the green as well. And anything that's left, you can chuck it. Oh, let's clean that off. Right, I've cut myself somewhere. I don't know where. But I can see blur. Anyway. Right. If my head's in the way, I am really sorry. Oh, these tweezers are rubbish. Well, they're not. They're great. But not for really, really fine pieces. This is like, you could place bets. How long does it take Corrine to pick up one piece of frit with a pair of tweezers? Uh, there's no prizes. But, you know, keeps it all entertained. Right. So I'm going to put a couple of, no I'm not because it's going to shoot off somewhere else, a couple of little bits of this yellow. Um, oh yeah, I didn't say what colour it was. Um, no, pumpkin orange. So I'm going in with some pumpkin orange. Just to let you know, because I forgot. And I'm just picking up what I can there and then I've got a little bit of yellow yellow transparent so a little bit of yellow in there a bit of yellow in there and a little bit of yellow on there okay so that's my piece done um there are some as you can see one I've nudged it again two um there are some little bits of frit in here so if I can get them near other stuff that's great if not it's just going to sit on your papers anyway um i've also noticed that i have nudged my thin fire there right that i've got a funny feeling this one might just fall off so we'll see what happens <laughs> it might fall off it might not anyway so i'm going to go and put this in the kiln now i don't know how long this is going to take at the moment i do know my kiln but this has got quite a few different layers and i obviously with the microwave kilns it's not a definite even heating so i'm going to put it on and then what i'll do is make sure that i put how long it took and what the timings were and everything um for my uh when i put it on youtube Anyway, thanks for being with me so far and um, I will just continue to fire this and then I'll put the last little bit on. So don't press stop right now because you'll miss what it looked like when it come out of the kiln. Anyway, see you in a bit. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm back again, although there was a bit of an edit in between so you wouldn't know that I've gone home, watched a film, had some sleep. Anyway, so I'm back in the studio this morning um afternoon evening wherever you are and uh we're gonna have a look and see how this came out in the microwave kiln so you remember that the one that we did was like this and this is in the big girl kiln and oh my goodness i'm always surprised when things work so you can see the size difference wow but it's come out i'm really chuffed with how it's come out so um, we're just going to have a look and see how much clean up it needs because of the papers and everything. So I'm going to pop that one aside. So, oh, 
literally the papers just fell out which is great and that's because i've used a thin fire so there are some parts that are a little bit sharper um because i've kept it um textured so you've got some bits that haven't gone um melted in as well um but all the pieces seem to have held together um and my hooks embedded you can see that there are some areas that haven't completely melted um so what i can do is i have one of these so when i get that wet and dip the glass in water i can go along and just take these little sharp edges off anywhere and also where there's any frit that's really sharp as well Hi. okay so um I don't even know if I pause that bit. So yeah, so there's some bits on here that um, there's some sharp edges um, on a little bit of the frit. So you could run it a little bit more um, in the kiln. So the schedule that I use, we always talk about schedules when it comes to the big girl kilns and people ask what schedule did you use for the microwave kiln? There isn't really a schedule. You know your microwave kiln. Um, with the big girl kilns, um, the schedules basically mean how slowly you're going up to a temperature, how long you're going to hold it at that temperature for and then how you're going to go up to the highest temperature how long you're going to hold that for and then how slowly you want it to cool down um, and then hold at an annealing temperature which is where all the glass becomes um, relaxed there's no stress on it and that's a really important element when it comes to the big kilns now it's an important element as well when it comes to the microwave kilns but we don't really have much control over that so I left this to completely cool um, so that there wasn't any parts of it that might be warmer than other parts and causing any stress. Um, I also placed a small kiln on top of the big kiln to cover up the hole. Um, just to cool that down, you can do that with a ceramic tire or tile or anything that's that's heat proof brick. Um, just to slow that cooling down. Um, try not to peep at it um, when it's cooling down because every time you peep at it, you're um, allowing heat to escape quite quickly, um, and you want it to kind of slowly cool. So anyway, I do have some sharp bits, but yes, back to the schedule I used. So on my scrappy little bit of uh, paper. So mine's a 700 watt microwave and I did 350. So that's 50% for nine minutes. Then I did 500 for nine minutes. Now I rarely use full power, um, but I did in this instance and I did full 700 watts for three minutes. So what's that? Nine, nine, 18, 21 minutes it took to do and as I say I left it to cool overnight um, so all of my pieces have joined and I'm really chuffed with and as I say I've got some sharp bits that I need to just sort out um, just through filing but I obviously was doing it as a tutorial so it got a little bit rushed but um, you can take your time over that um, but yeah I'm really happy with that so I'm going to get a piece of ribbon um, just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's hanging up. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I've got a multitude of colours, but I'm going in with the lime colour. Because I kind of like that. Which is weird. When I worked at home base and I used to wear green all the time. Especially the blooming, almost like a baby grow. Horrible dungarees. Um, and I hated green for such a long time and now well anyone who's in the UK or I don't even know if home base was anywhere else in the world but um yeah I hated green for ages now I kind of love it but I don't have to wear green dungarees anymore so we'll see this is going to get cleaned up um I've got to try and poke this through the hole because I've left a teeny weeny weeny hole um, and uh we'll have a look and see what it looks like when it's on the ribbon let's hold that in place trusty tweezers oh, paintbrush stuck in my tweezers got stuff everywhere I am one of the messiest workers ever um, so if you're neat and tidy excellent me no not so so there we go I hope you like it if you've liked this tutorial please uh, like and subscribe and um, leave me any comments if you've got any questions and but uh, also as I said before I'm going to be doing these little it's a bit of a mess now because I've been taking things from it but these little packs with random Tabitha's Glass Emporium pieces um, in the UK um, so again comment and let me know if that's something you would be interested with um, in rather and I'm really excited to actually make some tutorials just using the random pot so uh, anyway there we go 
in a microwave kiln. Fabulous. Take care. Bye.